Good day and welcome to our quick unboxing, quick disassembly, and quick review of the HP EliteBook 840G8. So I'm going to get to opening this. I have not opened this before, so I can't tell you what's in it. Nothing in the box. Typical warranty, garbage. There's the unit, nothing else, get rid of that, garbage. And I expect a typical North American adapter and nothing else. Yeah, that's what I've got, North American, because I'm in Canada. And there's your typical AC adapter, okay. Not the prettiest adapter HP's got, but it's just fine. Typical 65 watt and it's just fine. And before we get any further into this, look, it's important to know that HP ships these things out like candy to uh, people to, to review. The problem with that is, sure, they're not being paid directly for it. The unit's usually not given to them. They usually have to return it. But they're still sort of in the fanboy category. So I will point out the limitations on this device, and you'll find a lot of other people don't. They just sort of gloss it over. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, a couple of things to know about this before we get going. First, the G9. I see websites promoting the G9 spec. G9 just means generation 9, by the way. This is G8, gener the 8th generation. This unit is exactly a year old in that it came out in December of 2020. And the next generation, the G9 version, I would expect to be delayed given the chip shortage. So, um, but maybe I'm wrong. Let's find out uh, what's inside this one. So we're going to just open it up and let's go over the components. Okay, on this particular unit, what's missing is a pretty nice little feature. There should be a little sensor here, which is an ambient light sensor, and it just isn't here. So there you go. There's your microphones, there's the camera, and that little dot beside it that's probably pretty tough to see is actually an LED. It's just a, a, a light. I do a lot of uh, security training for a living, and this device has a little slider right here that you can see I'll slide over and it will cover up the camera. That's probably paranoid, but it costs HP virtually nothing to put uh, in, and if it makes you feel better, it's a good idea to have that feature. The other thing that's missing from this particular unit, right here, there should be a second camera, which is an infrared camera, and you'd think, well, why would I want an infrared camera? Well, that's because it gives you Windows Hello, which is basically face recognition. So uh, you can just sit down and have it work. So what they've done, to keep some Windows uh, Hello functionality working is they do have a fingerprint scanner on this one. But I would much prefer the infrared camera. All right, let's go through the, well, let's go through the unit itself. This apparently is glass. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. This uh, touch, uh, touch point I don't like. Uh, they're pretty popular on some of the more executive HPs and on virtually all of the Lenovo's. Uh, I just find it gets in the way. However, this is not a crisis. I'll just ignore it. You can see here it's labeled Bang & Olufsen for the speakers. Uh, all of the reviews that I've read so far said the sound is great. Uh, I'm sure it is. It's a corporate laptop. I don't much care. I just need it to be good. I would also prefer the buttons to be at the bottom rather than the top, just because that's what I'm used to. But this is hardly, again, a crisis. This is just fine. So let's take a look at the ports. So here we have two USB ports that have labeled SS for super speed. And what that is, is just your typical USB type A connector. You have your typical headphone jack and a Kensington lock, little micro lock. Uh, and here there is a, an SC label, which is supposed to be a card reader, but uh, you can see this one, it's just a knockout, it's not there. It could be there, it just isn't, it's optional. Okay, on the back, there's nothing but a cool little brand. And unfortunately on the bottom, they have an air intake. So the intake comes in here and the exhaust comes out here, which is very hard to uh, see, I realize in the camera, but let me just zoom in there. Trust me, it's right there, there's a vent. And the problem with that is the unit will suck in whatever is on your lap. So if you're wearing a house coat, for instance, it'll start sucking in the fuzz. So this is not the best design. It's fine, but it's not the best. Okay, so right here, this is one of the niftier features on this unit. Uh, if you push it with your finger, you can't seem to get it out, at least I can't. So I use a pen, pops out, SIM card tray, and you think, well, why would I want a SIM card tray? Well, because then you can put a SIM card in it from your from a phone, 
and that will allow you to be connected on the cellular network as opposed to Wi-Fi 24-7, which is just great. These are two USB Type-C connectors. Uh, they're Thunderbolt, so you can jam video out there. You can also, uh, this particular unit has a very, very good video, uh, integrated video, which is Intel's Iris XE. However, if you want to play high-end games, well, this will play them, but um, you're probably going to want uh, even better video. And given that this is Thunderbolt, you can plug in an external video card that will dramatically impact and improve your performance, your frame rates. Okay, HDMI port, pretty standard. It's an HDMI 2 uh, port, so you can do all of the cool HDMI stuff. And that's your uh, power jack. Let's look to the front and nothing. Okay, now let's pull it apart. There's only five screws. And the reason for that is they're using clips at the front. Now, typically you look for a pry point, which is something you can jam a credit card or, you know, one of these units into. I don't see one here, so I'm just going to try to pull it off using the screw head, my fingers. I like starting from a corner, nope. There. So the easiest thing to do is just to uh, take a credit card or something like this, guitar pick even, and just pry it in. Now the key here is to pull it in, pull it from the back, from where the hinges are, because it's hooked at the front here. Okay, so there we go. There we go. Uh, now, the first thing you'll notice when you take this out is that it's uh, magnesium. So it, well, you won't notice it's magnesium, you'll notice it's light, and that's because it is magnesium. Uh, is that drastically better than plastic? Nope, but it's a lot more expensive. It looks cool, it's more solid. Okay, let's go through the components. These are all easy to change and repair yourself if you have any sort of technical skill. I'd like to interject for just 10 seconds and ask you to click like if you found this video useful. Our site is dedicated to explaining technology in simple ways and providing cookbook answers for technical problems. We spend a lot of time on Windows 10 and Windows Server. We spend a lot of time on Azure, Office 365, but mostly our products are about how-tos. Lots and lots of cookbooks like how to uninstall something when it's stuck. If you would click subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. Thanks for your help and back to the show. This is your battery. If you need to replace it, it's just one, two, three, four screws and pop it out of that jack there. Easy to do. Your speakers are on the side. Game easy to change. Although you're never going to do that, so don't bother. Just skip that point. Uh, here you have your Wi-Fi. Now this is running Wi-Fi 6 which if you aren't familiar with uh, Wi-Fi 6, it's a big deal, it's next generation. Don't sweat it if you if you have a unit that has uh, the older Wi-Fi 5 because it'll work just fine. But Wi-Fi 6 really is going to be a big deal. Those little cables that come off right there are just antennas and you can just pop them up. They just snap in, very easy to do. One screw to take this out, not a problem. That's your CPU fan. And again, this ca actually can be replaced. Uh, it's simply what one, two, three, four, five, six screws, and one jack, pop it off, and you can replace it. So you can replace the fan with the heat pipe. If you ever have this apart after it's new, and this is brand new, so I'm not going to do this, but if it's new, make sure that you take a can of compressed air and blow it out. And if you don't have a can of compressed air, at least blow on it as hard as you can to get it cleared. Okay, then you look at the rest of you think, oh my God, there's all these covers. What do I do? Oh no, oh no. Okay, well, it's not a problem. Just lift them up, so. There we go. There we go. Actually, I'll just pull this off. It doesn't need to be on. There we go. So that's just a heat shield. Well, I must say that's a bit disappointing. This is a single eight gig dim, and I would have expected uh, two in this particular unit, but I, I didn't order this one, so I can't tell you much more about it. On a bright note, it means that I can upgrade this without any troubles at all. I can simply add a matching 8 gig DIMM and I'll be up to 16 gig. This is going to be the, well, what we used to call a hard drive, what is now called storage. And again, just pop that out. Just a little heat sink again. Uh, this is a 2280, meaning it's 22 millimeters wide, 80 millimeters long. I am very sure that if I took the screw out at the end here, this just pops out 
and uh, I'm very sure that we'll have various connectors along, along here so that you can connect any size of M.2 SSD that you want. All right, I'm gonna reassemble this. All right, so before we get to showing you more about this unit, something that, that's very important is the CPU. So you would think that a Core i7 CPU is better than a Core i5, and of course it, it is. I mean, Intel's not lying. Uh, however, something that uh, you should know is that the performance difference is virtually nil in practical terms. So this is an i5 unit. It's the more base unit. And if you have an i5 unit, don't sweat it. It's just fine. I'll put some benchmarks up here. The i7 unit is much more pricey. Um, and if you get it for free, as in it's on sale and they're the same price, which I often see in stores, sure, get the i7. But uh, I wouldn't spend an extra $30 on it. All right, so let's now open this up and see what we get. Okay, so before we wrap this up with a summary of the hardware deficiencies and cool features at the opposite end, let's take a quick look at Task Manager so you can see what's in this unit. So yeah, it's just the 8 gig of RAM. It's got... Well, okay, this is the bottom of the barrel, the 1135 G7. However, it is an 11th gen and it does have the Iris XE video. So it's actually still excellent. Now as mentioned, don't stress too much about the CPU because the performance difference is negligible. You can see here that this has four full cores and four hyper threads for a total of eight logical processors. It used to be that the i3s didn't have hyper threads, the i5 had hyper threads, which by definition made them better than the i3s, and the i7s had more cores. That's all changed. And now you've really got to look at the spec of each CPU and compare it to the other CPU you care about to see if there's actually any performance difference. All right, so on the bright side, this unit has a backlit keyboard, which you can't see very well, but just trust me, it's there. Uh, and the keyboard works just fine. Yes, there's a way to measure this, but keyboards are so personal, there's no point in discussing it. You're gonna like it or you're gonna dislike it. That's the end of it. I like it, it's just fine. The battery on this is uh, rated for about 11 hours. I have checked other reviews and under stress, you're going to get somewhere in excess of seven hours. So most people should count on eight while it's a brand new battery and five or six after a year or so which is again, excellent. It's very quiet, which is wonderful, even under load. When this jumps up, it's clock speed using Turbo Boost. It only does it for about two seconds, which means you can get over any hump that you're working on, but it's really not good for things like video editing, things like that. Now, when I say that, this unit is excellent for video editing, it'd be just fine. But the Intel Turbo Boost isn't particularly useful because of course that's sustained and Turbo Boost by definition is not. All right, let's get to the things uh, I don't like that you might be concerned about. As far as the keyboard goes, there's really just two things. One, I don't like arrow keys positioned like this. And two, I'm not a fan of the uh, track button there. As a very minor uh, point, I would move the power button from there off somewhere else. But this probably makes it cheaper to build to build it in the keyboard like this. So that's just fine. Not something I would complain about. As far as the screen goes, uh, 1080p, excellent, just fine. But there is no 4K option, which again for me is just fine. 4K on a laptop is complete overkill. It's a battery drain, makes it more expensive, makes it difficult to, and makes it a lot more expensive to repair, not good. But what I really do like is touchscreens, and this doesn't have a touchscreen, which is uh, uh, very disappointing for me. Another feature that is available on the G8 but isn't on this particular unit is an infrared camera, which should be positioned just there, and that's to give me Windows Hello, and it just isn't there, so it's just what it is. That was a choice someone made when they bought it. It doesn't have a, a card reader on it, although it's possible to, as we discussed. Uh, there is a slot here for uh, reading cards that just not populated in my case. Again, it's an option that somebody didn't pay for. Uh, the two things that are actually missing that you'd care about are, one, the there is no VGA port, you know, the old typically blue connector with a bunch of pins uh, that used to connect to VGA monitors. Now, those are all dead these days, so it's not much of an issue, uh, but if you're expecting it because you have an old projector or something, yeah, it's gonna be an issue for you. It isn't an issue for me. It isn't an issue going forward. Most companies have removed them from laptops, especially these ultralights, because they take up space, they're ugly, and they add weight. One feature, however, that you probably did want that isn't here 
is an ethernet port. There is no ethernet port. Um, there was space to put it in and they just chose not to. It's just a design choice. Again, not a crisis, just something uh, for you to be aware of. Personally, I think the Dell product, uh, the Dell commercial product, the Latitude and most of the Inspirons are a better build quality, but there's nothing wrong with this build quality. It's excellent. And that gets to a good point. Look, nobody makes junk anymore. It's not 1999 where you could really waste your money and end up with products that would just fail over a short period of time. Everybody makes good stuff. Asus, Dell, HP, Lenovo, so on and so forth. Certainly Asus and Lenovo are at the bottom of my list of companies' uh, product that I like, but they're still excellent. So all of this is degrees of perfection. So as a final wrap up, let me say that this is a nice executive grade laptop. The 14 inch screen is ideal for virtually everybody. And I like the product. I would be happy to buy it. I think it's a bit pricey. Well, let me rephrase that. I don't think it's a bit pricey. I know it's a bit pricey. But if you're an HP company or you know that's your primary supplier, you'll be very happy with this. And of course you get giant discounts in volume. So that helps out quite a bit. The only feature that's missing on this particular unit that I would actually pay for is the infrared camera. And if they had it as an option, I would pay for the touchscreen. In fact, I wouldn't buy a unit without a touchscreen, but that's me. You may be different. Overall, if I had to rate this, I'd give it an eight out of 10. And by the way, nothing gets 10 out of 10. So it's very good. Hey, we'd really appreciate it if you would uh, click like and if you'd click subscribe down below. Very helpful with the Google algorithms. Also, if you have a question or comment, put it below. We'll get back to you or somebody else will. And you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.